Hey, this is a video for assignment 2 of Harvard's CS50 game development course. This time we'll be looking at Breakout, or as it's commonly called, Brick Breaker. The game made in the lecture goes something like this. Start game, select paddle, launch ball, hit bricks, hit some more bricks, hit even more, boss. Sometimes you might need to hit a lot. Sometimes you'll drop, but that's okay, you got more hearts. That's mostly it for the original. The assignment has three main objectives and we'll look at them one by one. Here, we implement a general power-up item by making a new power-up class. This class contains arguments for position, the type of power-up, and if it is on the screen and has not been collected yet. Much like we did for previous objects, we here in create a function that extracts the power-up icons from the sprite sheet that is provided to us. We call the frames in main and render it in our class. The power-ups are numbered 1 to 10 and we'll be only using 4 and 10. A power-up spawns randomly and the probability of spawning increases every time a brick is hit. Once it spawns, it falls straight down where it can be collected and this collection is handled by a standard collision detection. There can be multiple power-ups on the screen as they are all recorded in a table. Once a power-up is collected, it is removed from the table after activation. Which brings us to... The ball, instead of being a variable, is now treated as a table. The activation of the power-up leads to 4 extra balls being spawned close to the original one but with slightly varying speeds. It is only when all the balls are lost that the player loses a life. This was achieved by checking the size of the ball table. Upon completion of the level, all the extra balls disappear and the last ball takes his place back at the middle of the paddle. The next objective was to change the size of the paddle when certain conditions are met. Though redundant, I changed the paddle constructor to take in size as an argument. When the player loses a life, the paddle shrinks. On the other hand, upon scoring a multiple of 7000 points, the paddle size increases. I made some changes in the interaction between the ball and the paddle so that the size of the paddle doesn't determine the force exerted on the ball. As the log brick sprite was already chopped up from the sheet, I just inserted it into the table of bricks as the 22nd entry. While generating the level, the brick's fate of being logged is controlled by a flag. This can be tuned, but in this release, the probability of a brick being logged is one half. A locked brick can only be broken if one has a key. We keep the count of the number of keys the player has using class variable and display them at the bottom. A key is basically a power-up and is twice as likely to spawn than the multiple power-up. If the player has no keys, then the ball just bluntly reflects off of the lock brick. If the player does have a non-zero number of keys, then the ball hits the lock brick and destroys it while using up one key. The player is rewarded with 200 points when a lock brick is destroyed. One starts the game with 4 keys. A new one is provided after losing a life and at the beginning of every level. The keys obtained in one level are carried forward. Also, the key power up only spawns when there are lock bricks left in the level. That's it for assignment 2. You can follow the links in the description if you want to play the game for yourself or you want to check the code out. Thanks for watching.